morning. Good evening to our UNBC team. We'll be we'll be continuing with the presentation very soon. Just waiting for a few more attendees to join in. For any questions or any queries, you can definitely put your questions under Q&A section and we will be covering them during the end of the presentation. And I would like to hand it over to Richard now. Richard, can you please take over? Sure, thank you for the warm introduction to Shita and thank you for the MSM team for bringing us together. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm the manager of international recruitment at UMBC, the University of Northern British Columbia. So I'm just going to quickly start our presentation. Um, so if you have any questions, you can ask in the Q&A section or you can put in a checkbox, but we'll answer questions at the end. Um, so today's presentation, what we're going to do is we're going to find out all these questions. Where is UMBC? What kind of university is UMBC? Student life at UMBC. How do I find a job? Is UMBC expensive? Why study in Canada? All these reasons, hopefully I can answer it by the end of the presentation. And my face is really white with this white screen here. Anyways, let's move on. So why study in Canada? Canada is the number one country in the world according to USA News. So this was taken back in April 2013, or oh, sorry, April 13, 2021, which is earlier this year. And even the pandemic, even with our recent um, election, Canada still ranked one of the top universities top country in the world for education. So where is UMBC? UMBC is located in the city of Prince George. And we overlook this city, uh, university sitting on top of the hill. Uh, we have dormitory on campus. We have a sports center. We'll talk more about that in a bit, but we are surrounded by the Rocky Mountains. So Prince George as a city, we're called a 20 minute city because you can get from anywhere in the city within 20 minutes. From the airport, you can take the um, taxi or shuttle bus to the university if you're living on campus. And part of your student fees, you also get public transit, something called U-Pass, um, that allows you to get around the city if you need to go grocery shopping or you wanna go hang out and watch the, the Timberwolf play at Massey Place Soccer Field. Those are also available. Okay. So what is the climate like in Prince George? In the winter, it is a little bit colder. Daytime is minus eight, spring is plus 16. Summer is about plus 25. We are now entering the fall, so it's roughly about eight degrees this morning. Um, the daytime high was about 15 degrees or so. <clears throat> so what type of university is UMBC? So we're looking at a different category of university. In, in British Columbia, there is five different types of university. There is the medical category, which is only UBC right now that offers medical doctorates. There's a research intensive university that offers PhDs and masters. And this category is UBC, Simon Fraser, University of Victoria, and us. We're the youngest and the smallest of the research university in British Columbia. Then you get the hybrid university, which is more teaching, but also do some research. So they offer some research universe or research masters and their courses are mostly undergraduate focused. So these institutions are Thompson River University, Railroads University, then you get the teaching university. So the ones that offer course-based masters, very few, uh, mostly postgraduate diplomas and their undergraduate focus. These are Capilano University, Vancouver Island University, University of Fraser Valley. And then you get the vocational slash college that still offers degrees, but they focus mainly on trade programs. So you have BCIT, which is British Columbia Institute of Technology, Langara College, Kuala Polytechnic, and Douglas College. So I know I'm missing a few from this list, but I just wanna showcase the different categories UMBC is actually in. We are a research intensive university, which means that we have a more research base. Our professors do a lot of research, which help educate our students moving forward. So where is UMBC? UMBC, like I said, is located in Prince George. We have five other branch campus, Cornell, Fort St. John, Kitchener, Terrace and Prince Rupert. So from Vancouver, um, Vancouver will be down here on the very left. Vancouver to Prince George, it does take about one hour flight to fly up to Vancouver. If you do want to drive, 
It is about nine to 10 hour drive. Um, it takes longer in the winter time because the roads are slick, but these are some of the things UMBC is known for. We are also called the house of learning by the local uh, tribe, uh, which is the first nation tribe that provided us the land to build UMBC on. So we are in a traditional land of Kreitane, and they dubbed us the House of Learning. So this is what UMBC looks like on the front side. You have the administration building, you have the dining hall, which is this building here with the little lighthouse thing. You have the library, you have residency. As you can see, residence dormitory is very close to campus. It takes about less than five minutes to get from there. And then we have our bioenergy plant, and we can talk more about that in a bit. But in the wintertime, we get snow. So the snow that we get up here is a very dry, fluffy snow. So it's not like the snow you will get in, say, Vancouver, Toronto, if you've ever been out there. Um, but the one thing that's good about our university is that even if it snows, once you enter the university, you don't have to step outside to go to your class. You can put your jackets, your boots away, your hats, your toques, uh, your glove, and maybe you soon, some of you guys already know what a toque is, but you will learn when you get here. So that's the advantage of being at UMBC because our buildings are interconnected. So you don't have to step outside to go to class. We're also award-winning. Um, we've been top five in McLean's Magazine for the last 15 years, um, top 50 research university, and we're also ranking times higher. Um, we also have one of the better student faculty to student ratio, one to eight. Canada, as I mentioned, is one of the top 10 safest country in the world and ranked the highest to, for foreign education. So let's take a look about what you do here at UMBC if you are outside of your studies. So we have something called the Northern Sports Center. The Northern Sports Center is a facility, a $65 million facility that has two squash courts, 50 hours of drop-in classes, two indoor soccer field, um, and three gymnasiums, and three basketball courts, a indoor 280 meter indoor running track, six to nine different cardio and strength fitness zones. So if you're ever bored or you like working out or you like playing sports, this is the place for you. Now, let's say if you don't like to play sports, but you like to hang out with friends or like-minded, we have over 50 different student-led organizations. Things like um, the League of Environmental Science Students. We have the Nerdy Gaming Club, UMBC Fancing. We have UMBC Forestry, UMBC Health Science and Society. So these are like-minded people who might be in the same uh, program as yourself, or they are interested in something. For example, um, we have the Food Appreciation Club. Uh, I know that they do try out restaurants around town and rate uh, different restaurants. So if that's something that you are and you are a foodie, that's something they can do as well. Um, we also have the Coffee Club, the Composting Club, and also the Organic Greens Club, the Jack.org. We have the Medieval Clubs, and we also host a various number of student-led events as well. Um, as you can see, the top right corner, you guys might recognize that as holy. We do celebrate that on campus, and it is also part of our orientation as well, our color run. So that's something that we do. Um, we want to make sure the students all feel welcome at UMBC when they get here. And we do other events as well. So move-in days, all the faculties and staff pitch in. Um, on the very bottom left corner was our previous president and my former director, and that was a hot wings challenge. So we are having different um, level of spice of wings and every wing that he eats, he has to answer a question. And this was very international focus It's one of the biggest event that we had. It was part of Global U, which is a yearly annual um, global appreciation event of all the things that are happening around UMBC and around campus and whatnot. Now, looking at what you're coming here for, not only are you coming here for student life, you're probably looking at possibly getting a job. Um, and this is where we can help out. UMBC do have their own career center, um, where student job posting will be available. You can go online right now if you are already have your own uh, UMBC ID. Um, check it out, go online, take a look, and take a look at what type of jobs you can get. Maybe you can even start looking for jobs and interviewing for jobs before you even arrive to Canada. So that's something that's also available as well. So if you take a look at our job posting, that's the website that we have on there. Um, it's a part of Career Center. Um, and what it has is you can also go through your My UMBC website. So My UMBC 
um, student portal. So that portal, you can register for your classes, you can pay for your tuition. And even in there, there's a career center portal as well for you to look at the different types of job opportunities out there. Uh, as you can see here, this was taken a couple months ago. Um, there are different jobs available at the very bottom. So the community engagement specialist in the small water system by the British Columbia Water and Waste Association. So that is a work from home part time and they're looking for people in environmental and sustainability studies or environmental science. So these are the type of jobs that we do have available for our students. Um, and this is the big list of all these jobs that were available in the summertime when I pulled this. Now during the academic year, there will be more jobs, but most of them will be part-time. In the summertime, um, a lot of our employers will post full-time positions as well. So as part of your study permit, you are eligible to work on a regularly scheduled break. So in the summertime, it is considered regularly scheduled break. So you can work full time. So up to 40 hours a week and you can find jobs here that are of your interest. For example, emergency resource and student summer assistant at the Prince George Native Friendship Center. So they were looking for a full time position. And that was one of the uh, job that our students filled. So. Other than that, we do in the Career Center, there's also career preparation tools, how to prepare resumes, what do you need to do when you do a job search, how to prepare for an interview, um, how to network with people because you're coming new into Prince George, into UMBC's community, you may not know a lot of people, how do you network, how do you talk to somebody, all these are available on our website and we have various different series as well and also links to uh, various different websites that also hire a lot of our students. So these are all available on our website. You can go take a look, okay? So how much does it cost to go to UMBC? Is it expensive? So looking at the international tuition rate right now, UMBC is about 22,000 to about $27,000 a year. That is the international tuition rate. Now, comparing it to the other four, other three research university, we are half of the most expensive one, which is University of British Columbia. They're at almost $55,000 for a one-year program in engineering. And for us, we're about $27,000 for a one-year engineering program. So looking at that, we are a lot more affordable than the other research universities, but you still get the same quality of education. Why? Because the British Columbia government maintains um, a certain quality of education because of our category as a research-based university. That means that we can only charge a certain amount um, of domestic tuition rates, which is what the local people will pay. Um, and we can only charge that much if we meet that quality assurance. So this is why if you are comparing um, the quality of education with the other school, um, just because you're paying less at UMBC doesn't mean the quality of education is any worse, okay? In fact, I argue that UMBC has more opportunity for international students because we're a smaller school and you get uh, more out of your dollar. Your dollar goes further when you're, not, when you're here versus when you're in Vancouver or you're studying at UBC. Cost of living is also a lot cheaper up in Prince George and uh, UMBC. If you want to compare housing costs, UMBC is about $5,000 for a one bedroom. Um, and you share a kitchen, a laundry uh, kitchen, washroom, living room. Um, and also um, you have a common place where you can do your laundry as well. Where if you go to UBC for the same one bedroom um, suite, you're paying about $17,000 an academic year. And if you want to live in one bedroom in per academic year in Prince George, it's about $10,000. In Vancouver, you're paying about $17,000, almost $18,000. So your cost of living is a lot cheaper in Prince George. Um, and that price can even go down if you decide to share a two bedroom with someone else, like a friend or whatnot. So looking at why you want to study in Canada. <clears throat> 80% of our employers are looking that they white co-op and internship students because they see it as a potential future employees. And in studying in university, 56% of our students learn hands-on experience. 65 students with art degrees will make up to $65,000 or more. Um, in university, we have university entrepreneurial hubs. 55% uh, of our leaders are liberal arts graduates. 
And on top of that, the government also invests significantly more in research innovation. We spend, the government of Canada spends $13 billion in research and innovation for Canadian research university, $1 billion in business for Canadian university, uh, $1.2 billion in research for non for profits I apologize for my cat if you can hear my cat. Um, but on top of that is 40% of our faculty are internationally trained. This means that the faculty members will kind of understand your background and what you're coming from um, and will be able to assist you that way as well. So on top of that, um, the majors, the double majors and the minors that you can get at a degree and a university versus a diploma or a college level degree. So these are the difference between the universities and also colleges, because you can do more than one major or minor or one program at a university versus a college. So the employment outcomes as well, um, the type of job that requires a degree, consultant, management, instructor, professionals, the type of job that a postgraduate diploma may get, maybe assistant or trade persons or administrator. And on top of that, the average hourly wage for a degree graduate is $37 versus $27 for a college graduate. Looking at the lifetime earning, um, the employees who have a bachelor degree, if you look at this graph here, makes a significantly more money across the Canada. In BC, it's a little bit close because we pay our tradespeople uh, quite a bit higher. But if you look across Canada, they are up in the, I mean, our Atlantic province, you're looking at almost nine, 90 plus thousand dollars a year. Um, in Ontario, $80,000 and above versus a diploma. So these are the difference that you do get. Um, and this will also affect your lifetime earning as well. So your lifetime earning, you'll end up earning more, and especially for women in education and whatnot. So looking at this, the lifetime earning for men with a degree versus a college, almost half a million dollar more. That is a significant amount over your lifetime. And if it's if you're a woman, um, it, it represents almost a million dollars more. So you do get more um, pay and more earnings when you have a degree from a university. On top of that, when you decide to immigrate to Canada, when you apply for your PR um, through the Express Entry or Canada Experience class, your degree actually has more points than a two-year diploma or a two-year program at a college or a trade. So if you take a look at that, um, so if you're applying by yourself without a common law or a spouse, it's 128 points versus 98. And those points matter because if you have 98 versus 120 um, and your score is 398. So let's compare this. Student A graduated from a college and they have 98 points and their final score is 390. Okay. Student B has a university degree. And because of that, they get 128 points. That will bump the, the same level of person, same English score, same kind of experience. But because they have a degree, that will bump them up to 410. And 410 could mean you get a PR or you don't. Because a lot of times right now, the cutoff score is around 400, 425. So if you can't break the 400 mark, the chances of you getting PR is kind of slimmer. So that's the difference between a degree versus a college. Okay. Now, even on top of that, looking at the migration, people who apply for PR, people who apply for PR, if you can take a look at that, two-year post-secondary credential, there's about 4,000 of them. People who apply with a post-secondary degree, three or more years, which is generally a university degree, there's 35,000 of them. And those that represents 42% of the people. So the people that apply, they rarely get the PR because of the level of education they get, okay? So this is a recap. Why is UMBC? UMBC is located in Prince George, British Columbia, Canada. What type of university is UMBC? We are a research-based university. Student life at UMBC, come experience it for yourself. Come take a look, and hang out with some of our faculty members, hang out with some of our lecturers, hang out in our dining hall. We have an all-we-can-eat dining hall program and we can do halal, we can do a vegetarian option, we can do a dietitian option as well. 
where can I find a job at UMBC? You can go to our career center. We have online resource, or you can even check out our co-op office if you're interested in co-op. Um, how do I find a job? Those are all the options. Is it expensive? We are one of the most affordable research university in British Columbia. Why study in Canada? Employment outcome, immigration points, lifetime earning. These are all the reasons why you should come to UMBC and why you should come to British Columbia and why you should study in Canada. So this is just a quick overview of the different things that you can do at UMBC and also um, the life that you can get after graduating at UMBC. So I, this is the end of my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions through the Q&A. All Thank right, the first so question that we have. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Do you want me to facilitate the questions? Sure. Okay. So the first question is, are there any scholarship for the students who have scored well in their final academic year? We do have some entrance scholarship. Um, some of our early award scholarships can be um, $500 to $2,500 a year. Now, the benefit of our scholarship is that they're stackable, meaning that you can apply for one more than one scholarship and be awarded for more than one. Um, and these scholarships, unfortunately, they don't automatically give it out at the letter of acceptance. You actually have to apply once you've been admitted at the university. So there are many opportunities for you to get scholarships. So yeah, I hope that answered your question. So there's one of the students who has scored 92.8 percentage uh, and has applied for Bachelor of Science in Biology. He would like to know or she would like to know, please let me know whether I am eligible for the program and will I get any scholarship for the same with 92.8 percentage in grade 12? So it looks like you are eligible for biology because you do, um, you're all from biology, chemistry, computer science, you have all the science requirements. The only thing that we probably need is your English requirement score. So I'll 6.5, no less than six, unless you have a MOI or medium instruction letter saying that you've completed your 10th year in all English curriculum and also your plus two years. But um, the Shita and also Mehek will be able to answer that question and help you with that process. Um, will you be eligible for this scholarship for this program? Now, it depends. For my understanding is you're probably coming for January. There will be some scholarships available for January. Majority of our scholarships are in September. Um, but there are scholarships for bio, uh, biology students, biochem students um, in um, January as well, especially for STEM students. We are actually producing more scholarships or creating more scholarship for STEM students uh, who are in women who in STEM. That's what I was trying to say. So those are also available. And how do we know like what courses to take, which courses to take, what to register for once we are completely enrolled? So at UMBC website, there is something called degree planner for you to look at what degree you're taking. So for example, if you take a biology degree, um, they will showcase what courses you need to take in the first three semester. Um, if you're missing math, for example, then we know that you need math 115, um, which is the math equivalent of a grade 12 math in British Columbia. Um, but the other thing is you can also email our advisor once you have been admitted and you have uh, your letter acceptance and you are um, in the process of getting a study permit or already have your study permits. So you can always email advisor asking for recommendation, but the degree planner will highlight and showcase what you need to register for. Um, if you do need any, any help, Mehek is a great resource to be able to assist you on that as well. Okay, and how many days uh, uh, classes are there in a week? Um, that depends on the number of classes you take. So as an international student on the study permit, you do need to take a minimum of three courses a semester. We do recommend that you take at least four because if you take any less than four or five, um, you will uh, prolong your graduation. So a four-year degree doesn't mean that you can always complete in four years we go by your credit point system. So every course is about three to four credits. 
Um, so in a typical four-year degree, there's roughly about 40 courses that you have to take. So these 40 courses, you can take them um, three a semester, but you do summer courses that will make up the courses that you miss or the time that you missed. Or you can take five courses or six courses, and then you can work more in the summer. So a lot of students go back and forth. It really depends on what your priorities are and your goals are. However, as an international student on a study permit, you cannot take less than three because that's what UMBC qualifies as full-time students. Okay. okay. Um, there's one of the students who's asking that he has done uh, or she has done 12 science in with biology, grade 92 percentage. Is she eligible for bachelor's of biomedical and molecular program? or she needs maths for it. She needs to study mathematics for it. Mayak, do you want to take that one? Okay. Yeah, sure. So uh, Isha, what I want to help you over here is if you have uh, you know, asked for two different programs. One is the biomedical program that, that comes for health science. So if you're looking towards for this idea, if you do not have maths in your grade 12, then you won't be eligible for applying for this particular program. However, if you're looking towards for, you know, biochemistry and molecular biology, that is a wonderful program. You can apply for that program that is available for all three intakes, January, May, and September. Currently, as we know that we are open for January 22 intake, you can apply for this program. Or if you're looking towards for biology, that is also one of the best program. Uh, if you're looking towards for uh, programs related to, uh, you know, uh, medical areas, so these, these two programs are the best programs and you can apply for it. And what and about also math to add. math? Sorry, go ahead. Mathematics. What about mathematics? So, so for mathematics over here, like see, uh, you do not have maths in your grade 12. That's not an issue over here for specifically for journal entry. Because when we talk about journal entry, UNBC is flexible over here with our international students. When you are in the university, you can take math upgrader and that is, and you do not need to worry about the maths. I know when we come the word math, it's really, uh, you know, some, for some student it's really scaring, but you know, that the level which we are talking about over here, it is just 10 grade maths. So you need to work according to it and you would be able to apply easily in UNBC without maths. But for biomedical, you definitely require maths. Maths and bio is mandatory to apply yeah. for uh, health science related programs. So just to add to uh, Mehek's comment regarding our math students who are doing the math upgrader, which is Math 115. Um, that is a credit course. So you do gain credits while you're doing it. So it could be a consider one of your 40 courses that you have to take. The second part is students who have completed math 10, um, 10th grade math, generally average around 85%. If they attend all the classes and do all the homeworks and take the exams. Now, students who don't do that, they generally fail. So if you are a studious uh, student, you could take the classes, you are will be getting around 70, 85%. That is, has been the average over the last three years that we have received students who do not have math and need to do the math upgrader at UMBC. Okay, so I hope Mahima and Isha, you guys were having these questions on maths related to your programs and basically your bent are towards the biology. Uh, so I think that your queries are being solved. For any other query, you can definitely contact us. We are available throughout. Now, if you guys are bent and you guys want to get into the health science program, what you can do is you upgrade your courses in the first two semester at UMBC. For example, if you're coming in January, you complete all the prerequisites requirements, and then you reapply for the competitive program as Bachelor of Health Science in September. So you can do that and still get into the program. Some of the courses that you have taken at UMBC may count towards your Bachelor of Health Science degree. So that is also an option. And that has been a few options for some of our international students as well. Okay. Um, there's another question, Richard, which says that I am admitted to BSc Computer Sciences, but I'm not able to register 100 level courses to my study planner. 
as it is not showing while registering what should i do so this is the question which comes which will come for course registration do you want to direct it to uh, a particular email id for that so the email id will be advising at umbc.ca um, that is the email that you'll be sending to make sure that you are eligible to register for courses now, the one higher level course that I'm assuming you have problem registering is because you do not have the 12th grade math. Um, you probably do need to take math 115 to be able to complete those programs or those courses. So it's probably giving you a prerequisite error. Um, but if you email our advisor, letting them know that I'm a January semester intake in computer science, I would like to register for at least three courses. I do not have math. Can you help recommend what courses I should take? they'll be happy to help you and they'll be happy to kind of guide you on what courses you need to register for. They can't register for the course for you yourself or they won't be able to register the courses for you. You would have to go into your student account to register the course yourself. Okay. Um, another question is Bachelor of Computer Science course. Is there a co-op? So can you please explain how that co-op works for most of the programs, even if it is there or not there. Certainly. Um, so the co-op program at UMBC is optional, meaning that the students is not a mandatory for the computer science, for example, or engineering. Um, it is an optional program. Students can enroll or register for co-op after the first year. So they have to complete at least 30 credits. Uh, students who are interested in co-op, I recommend that they go to the co-op office within the first year to let them know that they're interested because there's a bunch of workshops and also a GPA requirement that you need to have to be able to enroll in the co-op option. Now, our co-op options, uh, if you go on our co-op website, will outline what you have to do and all the programs that are available for co-op. Um, computer science, there are a lot of co-op opportunities, and these co-op opportunities are paid. Um, you would have, once you have been admitted to a co-op program and you know what courses or, sorry, which semester you want to do co-op in, then you will take that letter of offer from the co-op office to apply for your co-op work permits. And then you will be able to work, say, if you want to do it in the summer or if you want to do it over the winter semester, you are able to do that as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, where can I register for the classes? It's the same, advising at the rate umbc.ca? Advising at umbc.ca or you go into my umbc, myu.umbc.ca, which is the student portal. Uh, log in with your student number and your password and you'll be able to go into course registration, looking at courses and um, on the website itself, UMBC registration, there is a self-help tool on how to register for classes. There are videos, there's guides. Um, you can look into that to be able to set up your timetable. So when you are coming in for January, you kind of know when you have to attend class, when you have breaks and when you can study in the library or you know, hang out with your friends, for example. Okay. Um, so Richard, there are so many questions. I believe now six to seven questions on scholarship. Like if I've got 92 percentage, if I've got 80, if I've got 70, uh, so and so program, will I be able to take scholarship? So can you explain scholarship as a whole for UNBC? Rest, uh, uh, if at all there will be any other question regarding the scholarship, I will let you know. Otherwise, a uh, basic uh, information on scholarship will definitely help the students right now. Okay. So in regards to scholarship um, for UMBC, we are not a merit-based scholarship, meaning that we do not award scholarship based on GPA. We are a need-based scholarship institution. So we have our students apply for scholarships after they have been admitted to UMBC. So as I mentioned earlier, scholarship can range from $500 to $2,500. And these scholarships are also renewable as well. Um, some of them, for example, the President's Silver Medal uh, Scholarship, that one is renewable for four years. So it could be equal to up to $10,000. Um, and also our scholarships are also stackable, meaning that you can apply for more than one scholarship and you can get multiple scholarships. So I know one international student, um, I think it was two years ago, 
receive over $18,000 in scholarship because she applied for multiple scholarship and she was able to get, I think was, she was awarded with eight different scholarships. So um, those are also possible as well for us, uh, for students. Um, we also have a lot of different uh, research ambassador opportunities or research assistant opportunity or teaching assistant opportunity if you're in the third and fourth year and you wanna be a teaching assistant or a research assistant for some of our professors. So those are also jobs um, available on campus, which is different from the 20 hour work work that you can get off campus. You can still do the 20 hours off campus because the number of hours you work on campus doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, and if you guys are finding any more questions on scholarships, then uh, it is very clear that scholarships are being applied once you reach to the campus. It's not based on your merits right now. However, Richard, can we work on it like in the moving, you know, in the coming intakes, we can definitely work on getting some kind of merit scholarship, not like right now, but yes, in the future we can. Oh, Dashita always like me putting me on the spot. Yes, we are working on merit-based scholarship for students who come in with a higher IELTS, for example, or a high GPA. 92% um, in the CBSE scale is amazing. Um, you are a very stellar student. And what you can benefit from is at UMBC is you will get enriched into learning how to do research at a research university, which will help you um, when you move forward to graduate programs, if you ever want to do a master's or a PhD. This is what UMBC is made for. We all help undergraduate students discover their research potential, or if they don't want to do research potential, apply what our professors have researched to um, hands-on experience or real life uh, applications. So this is the benefit of UMBC, but we, we are working on scholarships for students who are stellar. Um, and that's something that is coming, but it is slow because we are also a public university which means that we have a lot of committees and a lot of meetings to go to to talk about scholarships. Unfortunately, I have to attend a meeting tomorrow to actually talk about scholarship and the reasons why we need international scholarships that are merit-based. So very timely question there, Dushita. Thank you so much and all the best to you for your tomorrow's meeting. Uh, there is one more question which says that I have uh finished a prerequisite in the form of pre-calculus 12 so can i finish it in my first semester alongside the courses for my bcom degree so if you're taking a pre-calculus 12 at abc online high school for example yes you can um, but you still are required to take three um, university courses and which allows you once you complete that pre 12, um, it then will allow you to take more courses um, afterwards who are more related to your BCom degree. Because um, for BCom, your um, first three semesters, if you don't have the prerequisite in math, it's really difficult for you to get registered in those courses. Um, so as soon as you finish that pre 12, submit the transcript and your report card, and you'll be able to unlock more courses. Okay. Um, so now that the students are going for Jan intake, would you like to let them know anything about um, the weather over there? Like what they, they should be expecting from the weather? That, um, that's what one of the students asked, that how cold it's going to be. Um, well, Prince George is known for dry climates, so it is a dry cold. But do prepare to uh, face winter type condition. So don't come in a sandal. Don't come in your beach wear. Uh, make sure you have a winter jacket, uh, winter coats, maybe some gloves, um, and things to keep you warm in the winter time. So do come with those. Or if not, what you can do is once you get off the plane, um, you register for your U pass, which is part of your student fee. Um, and you can take the bus to the nearest mall to buy your winter jacket or your clothes and whatnot. So this is all available. We have a bus station right on campus. So if you take a look at this image that I have up, the bottom left corner is where the bus will go through. So it is quite easy for students to um, 
transit from the university to their home. Most students will live between 15 minutes of the institution. So it's pretty reasonable. And there is benefit of living on campus versus off campus. The benefit of living on campus is you meet more people and you don't have to worry about your meal plan because you're on a dining hall meal plan and you just focus on your academics because it takes a while to get used to the environment because it's new. You haven't been to Prince George or Canada. So it does take a while to acclimatize. Once you're acclimatized, maybe the second semester, then you hang out with a bunch of friends and go rent an apartment on your own, right? That's something that's also feasible as well. So it is really up to how the students want to um, come and make sure that winter clothes, winter attire is important for January semester students. Okay. Um, is it easier to get jobs in Prince George? Or what about the part-time jobs available or full-time mm -hmm. jobs available? What about the jobs at the campus? So can you cover a section where you can talk about jobs? 20 yep, hours. There is. Yes. There are on-campus jobs for students, international students. For example, we do have something called MACE, the Math Excellence, uh, the Math Academic Center of Excellence. I believe that's what they stand for. And we do hire students to actually work um, as tutors for students who are struggling with math. So if you wanna do that, we also have a nucleus, which is for physics. Um, we also have other uh, research assistant or library assistant type jobs as well on campus. So students can definitely apply for those and those will be on the student job posting board uh, when we do get it. But uh, you can always go talk to our the MACE coordinator, um, the library coordinator or the access resource center coordinator to see if they are looking for more tutors for people who are who need help in writing an essay, for example. Um, on top of that, if you are interested in research and our professor sees that you have a keen interest and you have the knowledge to be able to do research, they may hire you as a research assistant throughout the semester as well, um, or even through the summer um, to work in, for example, the NALS lab, which is our research lab. Uh, where you work with multi-million dollars equipment to do analyzing with um, cellular bacteria for from that all the way to air particles and also to chemicals and how they react with certain things. So those are also available as well. I hope that answers the question. Yes, um, there were four to five questions related to the same. So yes, that has been answered. Um, do I have to pay for co-op separately apart from the courses that one is taking? Yes, you do have to pay for co-op and the co-op fee, I believe it's under $600 a semester. So it's actually cheaper than actually taking classes. Okay. Uh, for Jan and Take, if we register courses now, can we take, can we make change for the classes afterwards? Uh, depends on when afterwards. So if you are coming um, and you haven't started courses yet, then yes. And you also have up to our add drop date for the winter semester for you to change courses. If, for example, in the first week of course, you realize that, hey, this program, this course is not for me. I don't think I can take on seven courses. I have an international student that registered for eight courses and then realize that, it's a little bit too much. So he ended up dropping three courses and have taken now five courses, which is a lot more manageable for him. Um, and he feels that that's a lot better. And But he took the three additional courses because he was very interesting to him. Um, psychology courses, for example, he was had a keen interest in. So he plans to take that in the next semester now. Okay. Uh, there's one question from Marianju. How do I finish this prerequisite? Like, do I have to enroll in the school there locally or study in my own uh, and then give an exam? The pre-calculus maths one. So the math 115, the biology 110, and the physics are all courses at UMBC. So you will be taking it at UMBC if you're missing those prerequisites. You have to complete it in the first three semester of your program. So you, we recommend the students do it in the first semester because it's easier for them to register for courses in the second and third semester. 
Otherwise, it caused a lot of confusion and limitations about the number of courses you can take. Um, but yeah, you do take it at UMBC. You take it in the classroom of other students as well. Um, we do have domestic students taking Math 115 and Biology and Physics as well because they didn't take it in their high school. So it's not just full of international students. It's also with domestic students as well. Okay. And uh, how early can I arrive there in Canada? So CBSA requires you to arrive one month before your classes start. If you plan to come earlier, they may turn you back. Um, CBSA, that is their CBSA rule. That is not a UMBC policy. Um, if you have an option to come early and you are, say, visiting somebody, or do you tell them you're visiting somebody, they may turn you back because you're coming on a study permit, not a visitor visa. So they may not allow you to come in earlier. So we do recommend that you come in one month before your program starts. Um, so for January semester, you can come as early as January, uh, December 5th, for example. Okay. Do environment science have a good score in future? Scope. Yeah. <laughs> we are missing a lot of environmental science right now. Um, we have several mining projects that are happening around Northern BC. We have uh, something called Site C, which is a $4 billion um, hydro dam that requires a lot of environmental scientists to study the impact of the dam on the lower region and also the flooding of the upper region and how it affects the ecosystem there. Um, on top of that, a lot of our environmental science and NRES students, so natural resource and environmental study students, um, get a job before they even graduate because there is a big need for environmental sciences right now. Um, with the climate change that's happening around the world, with the soil erosions, with the um, different pipelines and people trying to be green, they really need these type of um, knowledge to be able to continue on with their business. Um, if climate change isn't real, look at the recent typhoon that has happened in India or the recent flooding that's happening around the world. Um, the weird cold storm in Texas. I mean, Texas is supposed to be near the equator but you have a winter storm that knocked up the entire power grid. So that does tell you a little bit about the need for environmental scientists around the world, not just in Canada, but around the world. Uh, I have opted major in computer, uh, science and mathematics, the subjects I've opted in grade 12, chemistry, physics, music, music and English. Am I eligible for joint major course? Yep, we have double majors. We have a uh, joint a major and a minor as well. So if you want to do computer science and business, you can do that. Although we do have a program called Managing Information System, MIS. Or if you want to do computer science and psychology, excuse me, computer science and psychology, that's also something as well. We had a student that did um, computer science and environmental science. And when he graduated, he was offered a $95,000 job um, right outside of, he, I think he was missing two semesters. Um, and he already got a job worth $95,000 because of how in demand somebody like that is. Okay. Uh, if a student lives off campus, what sort of transportation is available for him or her to get to the university? Also, is living on campus more expensive than off campus? So, as I mentioned before, part of your student fee includes something called UPASS, which is a uh, pass that you can get every semester, uh, allows you to ride to public transit for free. Um, so students get on um, to and from campus with the public transit. Uh, we have two major bus lines that go to the university uh, from different sides of the hill. Um, as I mentioned before, UMBC is situated on top of a little mountain. Um, in terms of on-campus or off-campus living, um, it really depends on your lifestyle and what kind of um, living you want. If you don't mind sharing a one bedroom with two other people, then of course your living expense will be a lot lower. But if you want your own bedroom or you want your own one bedroom apartment, that's gonna cost a little bit more. Um, living on campus is, I think, a lot easier and it's actually a lot better for first-time international students who have not been to Canada and doesn't know the environment because it is a self-sustained ecosystem where you have residence life coordinator that arranges activities. We also have tutorial courses as well. 
um, available in the student, uh, the student housing. So these are all people that you can reach out to for resources and ask them questions, which is the benefit of living on campus. And that's why I always recommend students to stay on campus for at least one semester, better if it's a first semester, uh, because once you're familiar, then you can go off campus and venture off. So learn to walk before you run. That's the way I see it. That's great. Um, there is another question which, you know, there are four to five questions like that, Richard, which are related to the courses. So I will revise it once again. For courses, you will have to email advising at the date unbc.ca. What if just emailing to advising is not helping for a few of the students, Richard? Is there any other option for them? Yep, you can also email ie at umbc.ca, letting us know that the advising team have not responded to you. Um, they are really busy at this point, and they are filling up a lot of backlog of questions. So try to type your questions in a format um, or try to make sure that your question is to point and concise so they can help you with the courses and whatnot. Um, but if they don't respond to you within 48 hours or 72 hours, email IE, we'll be able to see what we can do to um, get them back uh, to respond to you. Because I do know that we are um, clearing up and triaging some of the backlog of advising did have. Um, we did have a big shift or a change in organization where the advising team had is now split to seven advisors. Um, so they have more capacity now to be able to assist our students. Okay. Uh, gym or other sports facilities are free of cost and are they like 24 by 7? So your facility at the Northern Sports Center is included as part of your student fee. All you have to pay is a $10 price for a FOB, uh, which allows you to FOB in and FOB out of the gym. Um, it is not 24 hours. It is, they have set time. They open at 5 a.m. in the morning and close most nights at 11 uh, weeknights. Weekdays, I think they close at 10 p.m. And they have different type of activities running throughout the day as well. So the gym is open for a prolonged period of time. So if you're early riser, you can go. If you like to work out in the evening, you can go after dinner. Um, but it is available as well. Okay. Uh for Jan intake, how early can I immigrate? What about the sports club? Is this included in the fitness center? Sports clubs, we have tons of sports club. We do have um, intramurals as well. So students who want to play basketball, soccer, uh, field hockey. I think we had a field hockey intramural um, and the various different type of sports uh, activities as well. So intramural right now, they're actually recruiting for people that want to play. Uh, indoor soccer, indoor hockey. Um, there's a bunch of them. If you go to UMBC Timberwolf, uh, you'll be able to take a look at their intramural sites. Uh, we actually have recruited soccer players uh, who competed in the mural to join the uh, Timberwolf soccer team. So those are also opportunities where we call it as a walk-on. Um, students who are not recruited, um, but they have special talent and they do want to play for our Timberwolves. Um, they are able to do that as well. Okay. Is there a kinesiology program available at UNBC? No, kinesiology is not available. Uh, however, we do have other health-related program, I can say, um, or bio-related program. So you can definitely go and apply for that. Uh, kinesiology currently, it's not available. Yeah, but the thing is, if you're interested in kinesiology at UMBC or if you're interested in kinesiology, we offer um, the Master of Physiotherapy and Master of Occupational Therapy, which are both UBC programs at UMBC. So we have the facilities and all these sorts of equipments that you can go take a look and explore if you're part of the medical science program, for example, or the health science program. Uh, or if you're interested in that, they can kind of tell you what the steps you need to take uh, from a bachelor to a um, physiotherapy or occupational therapy program. So uh, we do have a question about students getting PR in the middle of the academic year. So if you do decide happens to get your PR um, when in your third year, for example, 
what you do need to do is prove that you have your permanent residency um, at UMBC. Uh, so at our registrar's office with your PR card or the, at least a letter stating that you have your permanent residency. And then you will be able to uh, switch from being an international student to a domestic student. So yes, you will get the domestic rate. Okay. Can I get into medical line or the medicine line after BSc biology? Um, then you would have to apply for our medical program. Um, in Canada, the medical program is generally reserved for PR, permanent residents or Canadian citizens. And it is not an easy program to jump into because it's considered a graduate program. After you complete your bachelor degree, um, you would have to do something called the MCAT. Uh, which is the medical candidate assessment tests, and then you have to apply for med school. So the med school program is offered at UMBC in conjunction with UBC. Um, so students do study four years of medicine up in Prince George as well. Okay. Uh, is there a separate sports team for girls? Is there a separate dormitory for girls? Yep, we do have male and female basketball and soccer teams. So we have failed male and female. Um, in terms of dormitory space, we have different wings uh, available for all females, all male, or if they have certain requirements, like for example, if they're early riser, or if they um, they are part of the out certain um, we call bicop uh, group. So bi. POC, so Black, Indigenous, People of Color group, if they want to be separated, that's also available as well. And it's part of the student's option um, to be able to select what uh, dormitory they want. What is the pass percentage of your university? Um, Passing percentage, like what are the grades required to You pass? do need a C plus average, which is 65% or so. Um, but if you're aiming for 65%, I don't think I would like you at my university. I hope you got the answer. The attendee is so anonymous, so I can't even, you know, tell that yes. Uh, got you types. Okay, is math com maths compulsory for? So for maths, we've already told a couple of times that even if maths is compulsory, you do have maths upgrader options as one of the courses available at UNBC and you can definitely apply for those courses while you're studying your first semester. That is how you can continue in your second semester and take up more courses. Is artificial intelligence course is in Bachelor of Computer Science course. To know more about the courses, just, just uh, one second, Richard, uh, because there's so many questions like that, you will have to go to the website you will have to see what about the course contents. Like every every particular program will have around um, 30 to 40 courses. Those 30 to 40 courses you have to look at, okay, fine, these are the 40 courses that you will have to study throughout your four years. So you have to go to the website and look into the courses. Uh, yes, Richard, now you can explain that artificial intelligence one. So uh, UMBC, our computer science program is not um, specialized. Uh, what we do focus is a foundation of languages. So languages such as Java, C++, um, XML, for example, or even SQLs, um, you will be able to learn these languages. And once you have a foundation of these languages, you will be able to pick up other languages quicker. So Ruby's on Rail, Python, R, all these languages are based off of C++ or even JavaScript. So once you have a foundation, which is the philosophy of our computer science program, you can then pick up a lot of these different type of languages and you can work on artificial intelligence. For example, our graduate who went to Facebook now works for Boston Dynamics, which is an AI robotics company. Um, but he credits his um, Bachelor of Computer Science um, degree to help him because he had a good foundation of language of how to learn these language. It's almost like learning um, French to be able to learn Spanish because their languages are very similar. Once you understand the basics of it, then you can learn other languages quickly. 
So I hope that answers your question about computer science. Uh, there is one of the student who has completed grade 12, written some books on environment, but will these things actually benefit while him or her joining the institution? Yeah, I mean, if you have written books, um, conditions, you may be able to join some of our professor's research opportunities. Or if not, um, if you are interested, you can do a thesis um, or what we call a Bachelor of Honors um, on a degree in environmental science. And you do have to write a thesis for that. And if you are able to publish that thesis, then for you to get into a graduate program or a PhD program, master's or PhD, it's a lot easier. So these are all opportunities here at UMBC because our professors will be able to assist you. And if they see a research potential on our students, they will guide them to make sure that they have all the skill sets for them to be successful. Uh, what is the average pay scale for environmental sciences graduates? Uh, that's a hard question to answer because if we're looking at masters or we're looking at bachelors, Bachelors, they generally start about fifty to sixty thousand, um, and they go up from there. Our master's graduates, I have known that they start at eighty to. I know one student got the uh, computer science and environmental science student. That before he even graduated got offered ninety five thousand. So I can only imagine he's getting paid more now after he graduated. Okay. How many computer languages are recommended to learn for computer sciences courses? If a student is joining in January intake, should he or she at least learn one computer language for computer science courses beforehand, like well, before even traveling uh, to Canada? Or it, will that be okay if the student goes to the campus and then starts learning? I mean, you can definitely um do courses online if you want to first. Um, there's a lot of free courses that you can take to learn computer science language or coding languages. Um, right now, it's pretty popular to learn SQL because that's probably one of the language or even Python that data scientists use. Um, but at UMBC, we give you the foundation of what um, SQL or Python is based off. So you can then mimic um, Python SQL programming language a lot easier. Um, so in the future, so it's really up to you. I mean, we have students coming in who have developed full um, apps already, but they still learned a lot more after they enrolled in our program. Okay. Uh, the last question here over our screen is, what's special in UNBC for undergraduate business students or business program is all about? Also, please shed some light on exchange programs. So I will talk about the exchange program. Uh, we do have exchange programs of over 17 different countries um, and international students are eligible to go. Um, we have students partners in France, um, Norway, Denmark, Switzerland, um, the United Kingdom, Australia, China, Japan, Korea, um, what else am I missing? We have one in Russia, Germany, Spain. We are developing one in Brazil and Peru at this point, um, but uh, these programs have been on hold because of the pandemic that's going around the world. Um, so it is an opportunity for you to sign up. Uh, you do have to have uh, prerequisites in order to sign up for the exchange program. So certain GPA requirements. Um, but you can choose from a variety of programs. If you're in business, there is a lot of options for you. If you're in health science, for example, those are a little bit limited if you want to take the exchange credits back, um, but it is also open. In terms of what's special about our business program is that we do have a variety of majors in our business, Bachelor of Commerce, so accounting, finance, uh, marketing, uh, international business, um, MIS, for example, those are the specialty that breaks down in Bachelor of Commerce. On, also human resource, I forgot about that one. Um, the benefit of that and our program is that we have something called a student club called JDC West, which is a business competition club with eight different other Western regional universities in Canada. So for example, this year's the JD West competition, it is a business competition, it's happening in Winnipeg and it's hosted by University of Manitoba. 
So students in the JDC West clubs can compete. Um, if you ever watch Dragon Den or Shark Tank um, in that type of style um, competition where they have to present their case, they have to present real life opportunity or real life solutions based on the case study that's provided. I'm actually one of the coaches for the entrepreneurship team. And when I coached, the, well, I haven't coached in the last two years, but in the previous three years that I've coached, our team has scored in the top three um, in the Western Canada. So just based on the entrepreneurship category. Now, what that gives you as a student is re- if you don't have any work experience, you do now know how to think like a business person. Uh, Because these case studies require you to think like an HR person or a business person or informatics person, how to cause or solve solutions, create solutions for problems that businesses may have. So these are all available um, on on the website. If you go on UMBC JDC West, uh, you'll take a look at that and you can see where you can participate in. And it is something that I do highly recommend. Um, joining a student-led organization is always something that I recommend to national students because that's how you break out of your shell. Um, and the other thing that I do recommend for a lot of our international students is being open to trying new things, um, trying new cultural things that are interesting at the university that you may not experience at your home university or your home country. So I hope that answers your question. I think it does pretty well. Um, so that, that, that was it. Do, would you like to, uh, share any other insight, Richard, uh, Richard, for the upcoming students or for our partner agents, which they should be taking care of, like basically the quarantine or travel, if at all you would like to. Um, currently right now, if you take a look at the website, um, the direct flights from India to Canada is hopefully going to be lifted after the 26th. So that is a great news and students who are fully vaccinated can also come in. Um, we have also hosted vaccination clinic on campus as well. Um, students are able to do that if they aren't fully vaccinated. Um, so we have a lot of COVID protocols that are in place. Currently right now, mask is still required for indoor seating and students who are coming, BC does have a rule that you need a vaccine passport. International students can register for it. Our international office will assist you on the orientation on how to register for the vaccine passport. So you can go to the gym, you can go to restaurants, you can go to get coffee or hang out with your friends at outside uh, when they ask for the scan of the vaccine passport. But currently right now, um, we are looking forward to seeing people coming um, in January. Um, I am actually very happy that I'm back on campus and I see students back on campus because that is the whole reason why I'm at a university. If I wanted to work in the office, then I can, but that's not why I'm there. So um, seeing students, interacting with students, meeting the happy faces that I see who have just arrived and they realize how beautiful the campus actually is. Because honestly, these pictures are amazing, but they don't do justice. Um, when you do come, you'll take a look. There's so many nice scenic view. There is a short hike behind a university that you can just go and hike on. Um, there's a small lake that a lot of students like to hang out there as well um, behind the university. So these are all different types of opportunities um, that you can get. In the wintertime, when you do come in January, you may experience a little bit of snow. So this could be exciting for some of our international students who have never seen snow, especially for students who are... I guess from the central or South India, uh, maybe you will never seen snow because it's generally warm there. Um, But yeah, uh, we welcome you guys to come um, and be part of our UBC community. Sure, thank you so much, Richard. Thank you very much for your time. I know it's night time over there and uh, Mm -hmm. uh, thank you everyone. Thank you all the students and our partner agents, those who have attended this session. Hope this session added some value to your knowledge for UNBC and we're looking forward to welcome all our students for our Jan 22 intake. Thank you once again. Thank you, Mehek and Lan for joining us today and uh, hope to see everyone very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. See you soon. Thank you so much. And if you come and visit me in my office, when you come in January, I'll buy you a couple of Tim Horns. 
So <laughs> that is a very Canadian thing to do. So come visit me. I'll buy you coffee. Okay. Do you, want, do you want biryanis from all our students from here? Oh, I don't know if it'll last that long. <laughs> and I really don't want to, you know. <laughs> yeah. Got it. I want okay. fresh ones. Yeah. <laughs> they, will, they will learn. Okay. Thank you. Yes, have a wonderful night. And enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Take care.